Well, hello again, folks. Liz Soria here, your tax accountant. And uh, in today's video, I really want to give you a few tips in how to do your record keeping when it comes to your IDL and or your PPP. Um, as you probably already know, I mean, uh, you know, when it comes to accounting, uh, you know, a lot of people um, miss uh, it, the, the fact that it's so crucial to keep track of your incomes and expenses. And I know that all of you, the majority of entrepreneurs that I have met uh, throughout my years of, you know, uh, running my business is that I have noticed that they always leave that until the end. And unfortunately, what happens with that is that when you're ready to do a tax return, guess what? None of you have a financial report up to date. So here's the issue with that. One is you're going to be overwhelmed, you're going to be stressed, and then you're going to be sweating it for next year. So hopefully my tips can help you to avoid not finding your situation over and over and repeating this kind of pattern every single year. And I always say, and I get it, if you cannot afford to have someone, even if you outsource, because now there's so many options out there, right, to outsource people like myself or many other, you know, uh, accounting firms or bookkeeping firms, then in that case, at least learn how to utilize the QuickBooks correctly. That way you can do it yourself. And then maybe at the end of the year, when you do your return, you have someone who can actually review it and make sure that everything has been recorded. Um, so, and like I said, I see many, 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 many mistakes with this. And uh, it, it's not good because people overpay or underpay and then that becomes a problem too. So let me jump in. As I promised, I was going to be discussing about uh, a few tips that I uh, really think that it's crucial for you to do right now. And one of them is whether you're using QuickBooks, happens to be I'm a certified pro advisor for the past, I would say, eight years right now. Um, and what is important, especially any accounting software, I don't care whether it's Xerox or Sage, whatever other software you may use, is handling what's called your chart of account, which is your general ledger account as well. Let's be a little more specific, sure. Uh, it's actually where you have your expenses, your income, liabilities, and assets. Um, uh, and obviously your equity, which are the five main categories that you have in the accounting system. Now, what happens with all these loans? Uh, eventually, if you get audited, you're going to need to show proof where, what did you use these funds for, right? And I think the easiest way that I found for my clients is that create within, again, doesn't matter what kind of counted software you use, but most of you are not using uh, QB, which is the most uh, you know common right now. Go ahead and create a main uh, account, okay? And inside your books, your general ledger, right, where you have all your office supplies, expenses, and your income, and your you know distributions, and all those goodies that you have. Go ahead and create a new one, and now when you're going to call it, for example, IDL loan, for example, right? Now, what type of category is that? Well, that's a long-term liability. Do not put it as an expense because it's not an expense, folks. It's not a uh, long-term liability, okay? Now, under that, then you can have that as a main category just for that money. The same thing goes for PPP. So instead of typing IDL, you might put PPP, uh, you know, loan for the main funds because remember PPP was supposed to be free money as long as you're utilizing it for the correct purposes. If not, it can become a loan. Um, and so the other thing is with IDL, like I said, let's go and concentrate on that subject right now. You go ahead and put a category IDL loan. Now you're going to ask me, well, Liz, what the heck am I supposed to do with the grant? Um, it's free money, right? Well, it is free money, sure. Um, but at the same time, you still need to recognize it in your books. Yes. Um, and what you're going to do with that is you're going to create a other income. That's my suggestion. I have come across many other accountants out there uh, who have agreed, and others have disagreed with me. But I think that would be the simplest way where you can just create other income and just put it, when you type the account, just put IDL grant. Okay. Eventually, there will be a deduction can be done towards your um, 2019 tax return when it's time for you to file it, okay? As of my recording, it is in the middle of 2020, so obviously your return is not due, right? Um, so with that said, that's what you want to do. Now, under the, the liability, like I said, one account liability, ideal loan, long-term liability, right? Because remember, 30 years that you, you, you have to pay back this loan, okay? Uh, another thing I want to bring attention is, 
like I said, then you're going to create a separate category that is going to say ideal expenses, or we can call it operating expenses better. And there you're going to actually have super accounts. Okay. So here we go. Ideal operating expenses. And then underneath you can call one, like for example, rent. Okay. Or mortgage. In this case, if you own the property where your office is located or your warehouse or whatever it is. The, the facility that you have to run your business, okay? And then underneath that, you can have another super account, okay? And that, for example, could be anything from, uh, you know, other type of, uh, you know, um, advertising and marketing that you had to do for your business. And then goes on and on, and then you can create that. So now you have a main category, hopefully I haven't lost you so far, uh, stick here with me. Uh, and then you have super accounts underneath, specifically with the categories that, uh, the ideal are telling you you can only use that money for see so what's going to happen is when you run that p l all right and your balance sheet which shows the equity and liability you're going to have that account showing exactly what all the expenses that you had just for those funds that you drew now another thing that I, I told a lot of people was that it would have been fascinating and I wish a lot of people had reached out to really find this out was to create a separate bank account when you receive those funds and just draw money out of that account. It would make it really would make it a lot more simple. It's not too late, so you can still do that. That's another tip. Definitely can be. And the same thing goes with PPP. Um, you know, with PPP, definitely I will keep track of the same expenses um, that you're allowed under you know the, the CARES Act. And make sure that you have it under the subdomain. You know, super categories because what's going to happen is. By the time your accountant, your CPA, or whoever it is, your role agent, tax pro, whoever it is that you have assigned to do your finding or your return, or you're doing it yourself, perhaps using some sort of online, you know, um, uh, tax software, it, you know, if you have that already as of now, it's going to be such a win-win situation for you because instead of pulling your hair and trying to gather all this information and try and get everything in order and reconcile, now you have everything that you've been doing. So here's my final tip. Always, I tell every single entrepreneur, I know how busy you are. I'm an entrepreneur too, and I have to wear a lot of different hats. Yes, I definitely contract a lot of other, you know, freelancers out there. They're phenomenal. They support me. They help me. They help me grow because the reason is that we have so much that we can do in so many hours a day, would you agree, that we have to have, you know, due diligence, but we also have to contract other people who can help us uh, free up our time. Okay, so I hope my tips have been very helpful. Again, in regards to accounting and record keeping, extremely important. Do not wait until last minute. Start doing it now. Go back, even if you just do it for like the entire month, let's say of uh, you know uh, March, and you start April, and you keep going back until you're able to catch up with the present time. Because again, you want to have those records really clean, 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 uh, where there's no questions how you use those funds. And then like I said, it's gonna be easier for you by the time you have to file your return, you know, hopefully it's gonna be quite, you know, easy just to run your reports. And at least you know the information is accurate as, as, as much as possible, okay? So I hope again, this tip has helped you. Um, for all of you who have been asking me already through social media, by the way, um, I do have a podcast. You're welcome to listen to this through my, as an audio file, if that's what you wish. Um, if not, you can follow me uh, if you find my, obviously my information valuable. I always say that um, I think that people connect because they feel there is a, a true value that we are delivering through all this YouTube. As you know, we are free content that we provide constantly. And the thing is that, you know, if you're looking into um, saying, hey, Liz, you know what? I don't have the time. I don't want to make the time. Or I just, you know what? Accounting is not my thing. Then by all means, like I say, hire someone else around you. Uh, but make sure the person does have some sort of knowledge and experience when it comes to accounting because um, sometimes we try to cut corners and it doesn't help too much. Um, so again, if you want to get the training, that's another thing that we do offer, by the way. If you're, I'm not, not, I have limited spots, but I've been asked, can you train me, Liz, in case? I do, I do virtual training, by the way, one-on-one uh, -on -one private. So that means that as... I'm here, you know, in front of the camera doing this video. That's how we will be working together. 
We do it face to face through a, uh, a, a camera. And a lot of times what we can do is also tap into your um, computer and we give you step by step how to do that training while you have me on the phone. Or we can be, like I said, in the camera in this situation. And it really helps because it's very direct. This is not a webinar. This is not a group, you know, training for QuickBooks. Not at all. I want to be very clear. This is a one-on-one -on -one training. And again, I'm bringing this up because I've been asked already quite a few times and they want to know whether or not I'm offering. It's limited spots that I offer, but yes, and it's still, yes, it's very reasonable. So by all means, if you want to do it yourself approach, then I'm offering that. And like I said, reach out to my team and I'd be happy to see what's my schedule and then hopefully I can help you with that. And like I said, we can do this, just one-on-one -on -one training. That way you feel confident and comfortable that you can do this and you can move forward. Um, and if not, like I said, better off, yes, if you can afford it, then by all means, you know, go ahead and contract someone who can help you. But at least in the meantime, if you are doing it, uh, then like I said, set up your books the way it needs to be done. That way you can avoid any damn headache out there, you know, when it comes to uh, being questionable how you're using these funds, right? So once again, uh, I hope this information has been, uh, like I said, uh, you know, useful for you and it has been, then by all means, I appreciate if you like, share, obviously, you know, that helps the creators like myself and many uh, uh, in YouTube. Um, so anyhow, I hope you stay safe and I'm gonna try to be doing once a week at least more videos. Uh, it's been a little bit hectic for me, um, but again, I'm here to help everyone out there. Um, and I believe that, uh, hey, I was born in the cloud over a decade ago and I'm still here for a good reason. So so again, watch my other YouTubes. Uh, like I said, I've been around for about 10 years with YouTube now, so it feels like a long, long time. But anyhow, stay safe, stay optimistic, and believe that hopefully things should be um, should be getting better for all of us. At least uh, I do have that faith. So um, I hope this information again has helped you. And like I said, um, if you have any comments or questions or things that you'd like me to discuss more in detail, um, then by all means, put it in the comment, okay? Take care, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. And like I said, don't forget, subscribe and check the rest of the videos. I have a lot of, by the way, just did, um, before I forget, I did a free online training completely, if that's what you're interested in, um, to really help existing and also new businesses in how to find the right product or the right service if they want to establish something new, okay? Take care. And God bless. Bye-bye.